Alrighty then, happy Friday, Friday, September 6th, this day in history. These items are from articles on this day in history on history.com, link in the description. On September 6th in 1522, that was a long time ago, in 1522, Magellan's expedition circumnavigates the globe. And I believe this was the day that they actually returned home from that big trip. This was a good, busy day in history. On this day in 1781, British Brigadier General Benedict Arnold, a former Patriot officer already infamous and much maligned for betraying the United States the previous year by trying to sell the Patriot Fort at West Point, New York to the British, for a bribe of 20,000 British pounds, adds to his notoriety by ordering his British command to burn New London, Connecticut to the ground. He ordered the British soldiers to set fire to every building. So if you ever heard of the term Benedict Arnold, you'll know what that's about. He was a traitor to our country early on. In 1847 on this day, Henry David Thoreau left Walden and moved in with the Emersons. On September 6, 1901, President William McKinley was shot. God bless him, he told the guards who caught his assailant not to hurt the guy. We'll be seeing more about this story in the next few days. In 1914, the First Battle of Marne begins, and I think we talked about this yesterday. Well, it was World War I, so <laughs> it goes on for a while. In 1915, on this day, 1915, September 6, the first tank was produced. It was developed in response to trench warfare in World War I, a prototype tank named Little Willie. I bet he wasn't so little. Little Willie rolled off the assembly line in England. Little Willie was clunky and slow, but his developers made adjustments and adaptations, ultimately producing tanks that were successful on the battlefield. On this day in 1966, the architect of apartheid was assassinated, stabbed to death during a parliamentary meeting. Interestingly, this was not the first attempt on his life. On this day in 1972, more of those Israeli hostages were killed in Munich. I told you before that that didn't go well. Yes, on September 6, 1995, Baltimore Orioles shortstop Cal Ripken played in his 2,131st, that's 2131, consecutive game, breaking Iron Horse Lou Gehrig's record for the most consecutive games played. So Lou Gehrig was the Iron Horse. And uh, Cal Ripken was the Iron Man. <laughs> the Iron Man was credited with reviving interest in baseball after 1994 work stoppage forced the cancellation of World Series and soured fans on the national pastime. Ripken's father, Cal Sr., was a former minor league journeyman catcher who, along with his wife, Vi, and coming off the clipboard now, who, along with his wife, Vi, instilled the perfect practice makes perfect philosophy in Cal and his younger brother, Billy. Cal was a high school pitcher and shortstop for Aberdeen High School in Maryland. While his father coached for manager Earl Weaver's Orioles, one of the most successful teams in baseball from the 1960s through the early 80s. Cal Jr. often got to take infield with the team and learned the tricks of the trade from the best in the business. In 1978, the O's made Cal their second round pick in the amateur draft. He made, I'm getting goosebumps, y'all. I do appreciate me some baseball, I sure do, and I'm getting goosebumps reading this. Hmm. He made his major league debut three years later, and on May 30, 1982, began a streak of consecutive games played that would last 17 seasons. Later that year, Weaver switched the six foot four inch Ripken from third base to shortstop, a position that was at the time typically played by smaller men. 
Ripken's quickness and great baseball instincts made him a natural, and his success redefined the shortstop archetype. Ripken was named Rookie of the Year in 1982 and American League MVP in 1983 and 1991. Ripken went on to play 2,632 games, that's 2,632 games in a row, before ending the streak by voluntarily removing himself from a game against the New York Yankees on September 19, 1998. Ripken retired after the 2001 season with a lifetime record for home runs by a shortstop, 345, and a record for fielding percentage by a shortstop in a season. Wow. He played in 19 All-Star games and was awarded an All-Star MVP in 1991, and in his last All-Star game in 2001, in which he hit a solo home run. Yeah. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2007. A record 75,000 fans attended his induction ceremony, and I certainly remember that one. What a nice guy, Cal Ripken, Jr. In... Uh, uh, 1997 on this day, an estimated 2.5 billion, that's billion with a B, TV viewers watched Princess Diana's funeral. I remember that too. So there you go. That is this day in history for September 6. And uh, you can learn more about all of these things at history.com and the uh this day in history section. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Oh, it's already on. Okay. Okay, get that throat cleared. <clears throat> Pour me another cup of coffee, for it is the best in the land. Put another nickel in the jukebox and play that truck driving band. <laughs> Let's see if that makes it into the outtakes. There's the trash men coming for the recite. Oh, you should, you should know that already. See, I'm running low on one of my ink colors, and even though I tell it to print in black and white, it still prints in color. We'll start over now. Okay. Words are hard. Record. Why can't I remember that? And thank God for editing. <laughs> Have I ever done one in one take? I don't think so. I wonder how loud that trash truck was when he came back by, but you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. Okay. Oh, turn that camera off.